For nearly a decade, NASA's Juno spacecraft has orbited the most dangerous and enigmatic world in our solar system, Jupiter. A planet so massive it could swallow over a thousand Earths without notice. A place of unrelenting storms, crushing gravity, and a magnetic field so strong it can tear apart spacecraft electronics. Its vast, swirling bands hide more than just clouds, they hide something ancient, something patient. We sent Juno to peel back the layers, to pierce the mysteries of this colossal world. For years it dove through radiation belts, skimmed past its moons, and threaded between invisible currents of lethal energy. But what it found, what it saw, was not what anyone expected. Because this wasn't just a mission to collect data. It was a journey into the unknown. And now, as Juno approaches the final chapters of its mission, the evidence from its flybys is forcing scientists to consider the unthinkable. What if Jupiter is not just a planet? What if it is hiding something? Juno's descent into the heart of chaos began with Io, the moon that bleeds fire. A volcanic hellscape where molten fountains rise hundreds of kilometers into the void, and lava lakes shimmer like black glass under alien starlight. In 2023 and 2024, Juno made its closest passes yet, just 1,500 kilometers above the surface, and revealed a world more violent than we had ever imagined. Towering calderas dotted the landscape, their reflective surfaces acting like obsidian mirrors. From the horizon, ghostly plumes rose so high they cast shadows into space. But then came the first anomaly. Beneath Io's crust, Juno's microwave radiometer detected something strange. A vast subsurface reservoir not just of molten rock, but of a material with an energy signature that didn't match magma. It was smoother more uniform, almost engineered. And Io was just the beginning. When Juno turned toward Jupiter's poles, it found storms unlike anything on Earth. Cyclones larger than continents, locked in symmetrical patterns, raging for centuries. But beneath the cloud tops, the microwave scans revealed something chilling. Some storms had no roots. They were hollow. Others plunged so deep into the planet's atmosphere they defied our models of physics. One, clearly visible at the center of Jupiter's pole in every wavelength except microwave, simply vanished from the deeper scans. As though it wasn't real, at least, not in any physical sense we understand. Were these natural phenomena? Or were they signatures of unknown energetic processes, perhaps linked to the core of Jupiter itself? Then came Loki Patera, the largest volcanic depression on Io. A glowing, 200 kilometers wide cauldron of magma. As Juno flew overhead, it recorded reflections so intense and so precise that lava could not explain them. Some infrared signals appeared modulated, as though the surface was interacting with the spacecraft's sensors and sending back patterns. Later flybys revealed another site, Chors Patera, with the same strange signature. The possibility emerged. Were these volcanoes not just vents of heat, but beacons? By Juno's 60th orbit, the probe captured what may be its most haunting image, a still, perfectly circular formation in the middle of Jupiter's most chaotic region. It was motionless, cold, and invisible to most instruments. Not a storm, not heat. A void. A symmetrical, unblinking eye in the heart of the planet's madness. Even Io's mountains began to defy expectations. In October 2023, Juno photographed three jagged peaks near the Terminator line, the border between day and night. Their shadows shifted faster than Io's slow rotation should allow. One even reversed direction briefly, an impossibility under known physics. And in February 2024, the strangeness escalated. Juno captured two massive volcanic plumes one over Prometheus, the other from an unknown source, erupting high into space. They were blazing hot in infrared, yet completely invisible in visible light. This mismatch in energy baffled scientists. Some thought it might be exotic chemistry. Others saw a link to Jupiter's vast magnetic field, noting that these hidden eruptions coincided with intense bursts of electrical activity. Even tiny moons joined the mystery. On March 7, 2024, 
the potato-shaped moon Amalthea drifted into Juno's view. But it wasn't reflecting light, it was glowing, emitting far more infrared radiation than it should. More disturbing, the glow pulsed in sync with Juno's orbit, almost as if responding to the spacecraft's presence. Beneath every discovery was a deeper question, why? Juno's data now hints at a radical revision of Jupiter's history. It may not have formed where it is today. Instead, it could have migrated inward from the outer solar system, disturbing planets and possibly ejecting entire worlds from stable orbits. The inner solar system may be the way it is because Jupiter forced it to be. And if it moved once, could it move again? After almost 10 years, Juno's mission is ending. On September 17, 2025, NASA will send the spacecraft plunging into Jupiter's atmosphere, where it will be destroyed. Officially, this is to prevent contamination of Jupiter's moons. And officially? Some wonder if Juno has already seen too much. Because buried in its final transmissions are echoes, strange patterns, impossible readings, and images that seem to hint at design. Signals that suggest we are not alone. Not even in our own solar system. Jupiter, it seems, may not just be a planet. It may be a system. A force. A mystery older. If the edge of the universe is not truly an end, then it is a threshold, and thresholds are meant to be crossed. The trouble is, we have no idea what lies on the other side, or if crossing it is even possible. Our spacecraft are too slow, our instruments too crude, our understanding of physics still chained to assumptions that may not apply beyond our cosmic borders. And yet, the data from Webb keeps coming, and it refuses to be ignored. The strange galaxies Webb has found aren't just anomalies. They seem to form a pattern, a sequence, almost like coordinates. The phantom masses that appear and vanish could be distortions from gravitational tides leaking in from outside our universe. And that cosmic pulse? It isn't random. Webb has now logged its timing down to the millisecond, and its intervals match a mathematical ratio found in quantum mechanics, black hole oscillations, and, most disturbingly, in certain biological systems. Some call it a coincidence. Others call it the fingerprint of design. If there is a structure beyond our universe, then perhaps it is not empty space but something built, engineered on a scale so large that galaxies themselves are nothing more than components in its machinery. The mirrored shapes we see in distant clusters could be the repeating architecture of that vast framework, its geometry bending light in ways our laws of physics cannot yet explain. In the deepest and most secretive research labs, whispers have begun to spread. What if our universe is a containment zone? A kind of enclosure. Not a prison, perhaps, but a controlled environment. Like a terrarium, sealed and self-sustaining, with boundaries that are not meant to be crossed. That theory raises a far more dangerous question, controlled by whom? If the edges are real, if they are tangible, then something had to put them there. Something powerful enough to shape space-time itself. Perhaps they built it for protection, to keep something out. Or to keep something in. And if it is the latter, we have to wonder what exactly is being kept here with us. The idea is almost too big to process. Humanity has always believed the night sky was infinite, that beyond each horizon lay another, and another, forever. But what if we've already reached the walls? What if we've been circling inside a cosmic enclosure for all of history, our civilizations and our telescopes pressing against the glass without even realizing it? The danger is that by looking too closely, we might attract the attention of whatever exists beyond it. If this is a construct, then perhaps it is being monitored. Perhaps our sudden bursts of radio waves, our probes, our nuclear detonations, have already been noticed. If we are an experiment, then maybe our watchers are curious about what happens next. Maybe they are waiting for a signal, not from them to us, but from us to them. A moment when we prove we've understood enough to knock on the wall. And the question then becomes, what happens when the wall knocks back? The web team continues their work, but the tension is growing. Some scientists want to publish everything, to reveal to the world what they found. Others argue for silence, fearing panic, or worse, an irreversible decision to try and contact whatever might be out there. 
For now, the official statements speak of unexpected anomalies and intriguing irregularities, carefully avoiding words like boundary, structure, or signal. But behind closed doors, the discussion is far more direct. If our universe truly is enclosed, then we may not be the first to discover it. Perhaps other civilizations within our bubble reached the same point, peered into the same edge, and vanished without explanation. Maybe the silence we hear from the stars is not because life is rare, but because beyond a certain threshold, it is removed. The unsettling truth is that we might not have a choice in what comes next. If the boundary is a living thing, or part of one, then our detection of it might have already triggered a response. The pulse web detected could be an echo, or it could be an answer. For now, all we can do is keep watching, keep listening, and try to prepare for a reality we may not be equipped to survive. The cosmos has always been a place of mystery, but perhaps it is also a place of intention. And if that is true, then we have to ask ourselves, are we the explorers, or the observed? Because the edge of the universe is no longer a distant dream. It is here, staring back at us. And it may not be patient forever.